Estimate activity resources. As the word resources implies, this is an all-inclusive consideration of any type of resource, be it human resources, equipment resources, and material resources that are needed to complete the project work. This is an exclusive process in that there's no other process in the PMBOK guide where equipment and material resources are considered. So this is a very important one. Our goal is to estimate people, equipment, and material resources needed to complete the project work. For that reason, of course, you need the people who are actually doing the work to help you come up with ideas of how many people are needed for certain tasks on the project. So let's take a look at the inputs to this. Our schedule management plan, which we've talked about. Activity list, which we've talked about. Activity attributes, also discussed. Resource calendars and risk register are a bit new. A resource calendar shows you time periods when certain resources are available. It also shows you time periods when they're not available. So if you're thinking of using resource X on a project, hey, get their resource calendar, see if they're available. The risk register is needed here because we could have resource risks, and if we need to build in any contingencies for those resources, we want to have that risk register in hand. You see, a lot of people, they get hung up with the fact that if you look down the list of knowledge areas, time comes before risk. And people say, hey, wait a minute, we're still on time. Where did we get the risk register from? You see, you need to think about project management being iterative. You think about it being in layers. It's like peeling an onion. You know, you peel one layer of time and you see a layer of risk. You peel that layer of risk, you see another layer of time. You peel that layer of time, you see another layer of cost. You know, you peel that layer of cost, then you see a layer of scope. And you're like, oh, it's all one, exactly. It's a unified vision that you should have to project management. So don't think it odd when you see things that happen, in quote, in a lower down knowledge area surfacing in an earlier knowledge area. This is business as usual. If you're taking the PMP or CAPM exam, you'll see quite a lot. We've got activity cost estimates. Like I said, this comes from cost, so don't think it's strange. These are estimates for resources carrying out work. And they need to be considered because, think about it, if you use a more skilled resource than Phil, maybe Phil is a lesser skilled resource, you use a more skilled resource, you'll pay more money. But is that what you want to do? Would you prefer to use more Phil's time, you know, pay less, or would you prefer to get it done quicker and pay more to get someone else? So all these considerations need to be made when you're estimating activity resources. And we've got EEFs and OPAs, which hopefully you've read previously. Taking a look at our tools and techniques, we've got expert judgment, alternative analysis, looking at the different alternatives for carrying out the work. Should we use Phil or should we use someone else who's more skilled? Oh, it costs more to use them and so on. Published estimating data looks at data that's routinely published by trade organizations and firms to give an idea of what it would cost for certain standard labor uh, tasks and certain resources. We have bottom-up estimating, which enables us to break down a task into lower levels to better understand the task and to better be able to estimate the activity resources. You know, if you've got a very difficult to understand task, break it down into lower levels and then add up how many resources you need and roll that up into a total. We call that bottom-up estimating. Project management software like Excel, spreadsheets, Microsoft Project, we could use that to estimate activity resources. Let's take a look at our outputs here. Our output, activity resource requirements. Don't forget this. You're going to come across that going into human resource management. So as you plan human resource management, you need to know what your resource requirements are. Again, don't forget, these resource requirements are not for HR alone. This is for equipment and material resources. So like I said, it's one of those exclusive ones. You definitely want to know this well for your exam because it has lots of inputs from other areas and it's quite important. Because ultimately, when you talk about the budget for your project, 
It has to do with the resources. That's where a lot of the money gets spent. It's on the resources, hardware, software, people, equipment, and so on. Taking a look at our next output, resource breakdown structure. It's a tree structure diagram that shows you hierarchical breakdowns of resources, or it shows you categorizations, human, equipment, material, and project documents updates.